What's going on my fellow farm all brothers and sisters? All right, so welcome back to part two Now we're gonna go ahead and today and get these trailer ramps cut off of here get the new ones slid on start mocking up the uh, jacks that go underneath of them and um, Less is gonna be painting them. So stay tuned All right, so as you see, somebody sliced this off one time before, and then they went ahead and did some kind of booger-looking weld to hold this thing back in place. So I'm gonna have to cut it off there, in there, and there. I was gonna use a plasma cutter, but I think I might be able to get this with the grinder. So we're gonna go ahead and knock this off, get these ugly-ass ramps off of here, because look at all that weld. That is absolutely awful. <laughs> Terrible job. Anyway, so. Let me go ahead and get this thing set up in the stand. Let's get started. Okay. So let's see if I can get in here and get these things ground off. All right, let me go get a bar and a hammer. I have a feeling that'll pop off because those welds are pretty nasty. All right. Let's give us a shot. See how good this comes off. Trusty railroad spike. Always good to have. It. Well, didn't take much to pop that guy's welds off. Ooh. Hate to say it, but that's why sometimes some people shouldn't attempt this. Have some kind of basic skills to know to clean up your metal before you weld. Probably hammering in, probably breaking right off. Like that. Yeah, that wasn't much holding that on. That was, uh, maybe I can show you guys. Penetration on his welds. We're almost nothing. He basically only welded on the surface. He did not get through into that metal at all. So that actually wasn't very safe for the way he welded that on there. Well, it's gonna change. I'm gonna pin this with a clevis pin, so. But we're gonna clean this all up first. All right, let me, uh, let me go and grind this bar off, clean this up some. good enough to start. Clean that up more once I'm ready to do some welding on it. Now, let me move this camera back some here. Actually, let me put you guys. It's probably going to fall over. And let me go ahead and zoom this back in a little bit. Alright, see if we can get these things off of here. I'm not a big fan of the chain design because you're pulling forward and you're pulling on that bar really hard, which can put a bend in the bar, <coughs> which it did. And then on top of that, it can always bounce. So we're gonna set this up a lot different than this. Those ugly ducklings. All right, so let me show you some. Show you guys some ugly welds.
See, that's all the bits and pieces that were stuck on there. Definitely not good at all. Pipe was way too big. That wasn't good. Caused a lot of play and wiggling in the steps. Stop. I don't know why I keep calling them steps. The ramps. Anyway, that's basically like the jacks we're going to build. But they're going to be a little different than what these look like. And here's the other one. I mean, at least the welds penetrated here. But just ugly. And then all the rebar on top. Terrible looking. Alright. Let's go ahead and get my... Let's get this bar straightened out a little bit. And I guess... Uh, there's no way I can straighten that bow. Not in this piece of pipe. See, it's got a little bow right there. That's a piece of solid stock. There's nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. Oh well. I guess that's going to be what it's going to be. But... I want to clean that end up a little bit before I put this thing back on. So that way I get a better weld, um, depending how I pin that back on there. And other than that, that's about it. So let's get started. All right, let's get this bar out. Knock you guys over. <laughs> All right, so obviously I got to clean up inside here before I do any welding. So I just wanted to clean the surface up for now. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and go get the uh, the ramps, bring them out here, get them set up, and let's get them slid in. All right, ramps are in place, and yeah, they're definitely way nicer, way longer. Good for what I needed. Obviously, you can only go so long. I'm not sure as how I didn't want, you know, seven foot ramps out the back. For not being a dovetail trailer, these will work just fine. All right, well, you can see the difference, how short they are compared to them, and how much heavier, <laughs> better looking they are than those. So anyway, so let me show you. Now they're gonna go down a little bit. I got them up a little high right now just because they're sitting on the trailer. But yeah, should work out really good. Got the tag bracket weld in underneath there. So, all right, let's go ahead and slide this, uh, this pipe on in here. Here, you know what? I'll set you guys back here. Maybe that'll keep me from knocking this thing over. All right, let's try that. All right, we're in place. So anyway, so you can see the difference on the length. That right there is much better. Just helps give it a little bit more gradual for the tractors to go up rather than so steep with these ones here. It's being so short. Those ugly pipes they had bought on there. Boy, that bothers me. So, all right. So I don't really have anything to put on that end plate right now uh, for pinning. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that cap back on there that was on and then weld it a little more solid. Um, I'm just going to do a three-point weld so that way in the future if I ever had to pull it, I could. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. We're just going to tack that thing back on. So let me go ahead and get these old ramps out of the way, get set up, and then we're going to start laying out the uh, support bars to hold these ramps up in place. I'm gonna probably cut these on an angle so that way they kind of angle to the ground properly. I don't know, I'm gonna, I mean, I guess they don't have to go on an angle. It would just look a little more professional. So if I'm using three inch channel, there. Looks like if I go about, 16, that's about three quarter inch less, and about 15 and a quarter. So, and then the bottom plate going across there. So let's put down 15 and a quarter there, and what, 16 and a quarter here. That puts me off the ground a little bit. Sixteen. 
Yeah, I think that'll actually be good. And that way, when the trailer springs go down so far, it'll hit, it'll stop. Because I don't really want them long, but I don't really want them super short either. Yeah, I think that'll be actually pretty good. All right, well, let's go ahead and start laying that shit out. Let's go ahead and get the uh, get those jacks figured up. All right, I think I'm all set up and ready to rock and roll here. So I'm going to put some earplugs in because cutting this metal gets pretty loud. And I already got tinnitus in my right ear from my work truck and my ladder, so I don't need to add to it. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and start laying this out. So far, I gotta admit, for being a little a little chop saw, because I got my big 10, 12 inch one in there, but for a little one that takes a seven and a quarter inch blade, that little evolution's been pretty nice. And I tell you, paired with that Diablo uh, Speed Demon or Steel Demon blade, I have cut probably 20 sets of steps with that, and that's a lot of cuts per step that I make. If you see my last videos, and I've cut a lot of metal up for these ramps so far with this blade, and that thing is still going. I gotta say, that's been one of the probably the best blades I've ever used. I wish they sold one like that for that bigger motor box. Alright, so anyway, so now we're gonna go ahead and get the legs down. So these, uh, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and just do it like that. Fifteen and quarter and sixteen. Now I probably should have got my angle finder. Just found an angle in that real quick. That make a lot more sense. But I gotta cut it this way. Cut it this way. You know what? You do it this way. I can find the angle.
once I find the angle of the first one, I'll just lay it on the next one and trace it. Now, I ain't got nobody to hold this thing up. I don't like this guard on the saw because it makes it hard to find an angle. You keep your finger off that trigger if you got your finger the way I do. Alright. That's the angle right there. Knock it down. Let me see where it is. Looks like it's about a 20 degree angle. Maybe 20, 22 and a half. That looks pretty good. Let's cut it. There's the other angle. I'm going to check this first, see if it's what I want, and then we're going to keep going. All right, that worked out really good lengthwise, so let's go ahead and up the next one. Every so often, it'll generate heat, and it almost hardens the steel. Give it a slight angle as you're cutting, hold on to it good. You'll actually break through, start cutting, and then you can bring it back down normal. It happens sometimes. Do that one. I got mine. Do that one. All right, so we're done with this for now. Bring my flat pieces over, start laying this out welded. Obviously, you want to clean all your weld, your areas up your welding first, or it ain't going to stick. That's how they're going to go, just like that. Beautiful. All right, so let me make a note that when you go ahead and you do your grinds, make sure you give it like a 45 degree bevel. So when you butt your two pieces together, it gives some place for that puddle, that weld to flow into. Makes it a lot stronger than just doing across that surface. So always try to give yourself a, a bevel when you're butt welding stuff. All right, I'm not gonna record repeating it to the next one, but I will start recording when it comes time to welding. So give me a minute and I'll be back. All right, we're all set up, squared up, got the beer, and we are ready to weld on the man. Yep, being squared looks good. All right, let's crack it and get welded. Oh, that is so cold. It's the best way to have it. Ooh, that, man, that was cold. Turn my fridge up to max. Yeah, she's cold now. Alright, let's get this thing tacked right here. Double check. I had to adjust it a little bit to make sure it's so square. Perfect. Yeah. Measure across the front real quick. Without a big one. 
school. All right, we're going to tack it two spots, and then I'm going to check it first before we do final load. That is absolutely perfect. That actually fits perfectly. Oof, not bad. Alright, let's do it. Nice. A little breezy out here today. That's why I'm stitch welding, not doing straight thing. Just in case anybody was wondering why I'm not doing them. There's a reason. Okay. Now on the inside I can run a full bead because it's kind of shielded and the wind can't blow it out. So there's a stitch weld. Like that. And then the full welds inside. Good penetration. They work nice. All right, so there's one laid out ready to rock and roll. Now I'm going to cheat. I'm going to set the other one on top of this. And use that to kind of square it up and get my tacks. Smarter, not harder. And that, my friends, is how you square up and measure something with my squaring and measuring. Alright, looks good. I am going to just double check though. Let me check with the square. <coughs> yes, it's going to be dead on it like the other one, but just for a peace of mind. Yep, good. Didn't think it wouldn't be. Alright, so I'm going to tack it, and I'm going to scoot the other one out of the way. Turn this camera around, get this table out of the way, set these on the ground, level them, let them on. Give me a second to get set up. All right, it's starting to get a little windy out here again. So I'm just going to show you guys. So that's how I did the legs. So the jacks actually follow the angle properly when they hit the ground instead of being on an angle where the other ones were. So that's how they're going to look. So I'm going to go ahead and weld these things on flip the uh, ramps back up and then we'll do the final weld and I'll show you guys a little bit more from that point but that's how it's gonna gonna look I like it looks pretty good all right be right back all right I got the one welded so I figured I'll go ahead and record welding the other one and get these things done and then uh, support to next all right so let's weld her up these out of the way let's drop these ramps and see how they look 
clamps off. All right, let me zoom this back that way. And I'll sit you guys over here. That looks so much more professional when they're actually angled the direction they hit the ground. I think it looks terrible when those things are nice and straight. All right, let's drop these ramps. Solid going up the trailer now. All right, I like it. All right, so let me show you guys how they look. <coughs> yeah, I think they look nice. I am quite happy with it. Now, the last thing I'm going to end up doing to it is I'm going to go ahead and put some kind of angle here. I just don't know what I want to do yet. I don't think I have any extra metal, so I'm going to go to the scrap yard and find some. But that'll be a later date we'll put those fronts on it'll ease that transition up getting on there but as you see yeah that's a million times better on the back of that trailer much stronger now here's the next part of this project let me set you guys up over here and let me raise this ramp up and i'll try to show you you know i thought these were going to be a lot heavier since the channel was so much bigger, it's four inch instead of three inch. It's not that bad, actually, surprisingly. Kind of happy that way. All right, let me move over here. All right, so here's the plan. Plan is, move my beer. All right, so the plan is, instead of using chains, which in my opinion, when you hook chains, the steps wobble. Ramps, I don't know why I keep calling them steps. They wobble, which starts to break away on that bar. I'm gonna put a straight bar in here. I'm gonna go down below the deck, like that. So that's the angle they're gonna be. Now below the deck, I have room to mount a pin in there. We're gonna have a chain on there. That way it holds it in place. And we got the hitch pin locks in and then that bar will swivel one here now this one I'm gonna lose the lock washer I'm gonna screw this out where I want it somewhere in there I'm gonna weld this inside here and then I'm gonna place it on here where I want it and that's gonna help lock the top part side the other pin will be down below down inside there and then when I want to drop the ramps, the straight bar will lay flat in that track, out the back, out of the way. Done deal. So I think this should work very well. All right, I guess um, I guess next, I might as well tack that plate back on there because I don't think these are coming back off. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done and then start cutting these bars. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to cut the bar. I got to weld these in place first get my distance you know i'm actually probably going to drill a couple holes in there so depending what i'm hauling on this trailer if i don't want these ramps tilting this way if i have to bring these ramps straight i'm going to drill an additional maybe three holes so i actually have an adjustment to those ramps where i can actually move them so they're not stuck in one place i haven't seen that yet but you will now all right let me get set back up again all right, so we're back out here on day two. I had to do a few things I didn't do on camera. No big deal. I was looking at the ramps a little bit last night, and I liked the way they came out. But I wasn't really happy with the height right here. They were just sitting a, a little too low for me, and I wasn't really happy with that. So I went ahead and I broke the brackets loose. Let me get this out of the way. I went ahead and I broke the brackets loose on all, all three of them. Right there. And then I went ahead and just raised everything up a little bit. So now I got that height that I wanted. So it's actually a really nice transition now. Going from the ramp right on up to the deck. Just like I want it. So everything actually came out really nice. Um, yeah, I couldn't be happy with so far the way they're turning out. So 
the only thing that I did off camera besides raising the brackets was I went ahead and just fabbed up the first side over here went ahead and I pinned this one here to see how it would work out and worked out pretty good she's nice and tight so I got the pin in this side so this is where I wanted this one and then this one over here I didn't really have enough room to do those solid pins because what I want it I'm gonna get some grade eights and change these out but I wanted this flat channel or the flat uh, stock when I lower it down to lay inside this channel right here so that way it's out of the way so it actually works out very well so let me go ahead and unpin it try to do this here with one hand all right so what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna release it I'm gonna get, get this ramp down first then I'll show you, show you what I'm talking about Okay, so the ramp down. So what I wanted was this. I wanted it to lay in there just like that. So that way it's completely out of the way from loading anything. And I don't have to worry about getting a sliced tire. So as you see, it's coming along quite nicely. I'm thinking of leaving those chains and I might go ahead and put a beaner on the end of that. And I might wrap it around um, you know the steps just for that extra security like a safety chain save some reason in case a bolt broke something happened with that bar i don't want those ramps coming down so i might go ahead and leave that safety chain on there probably don't need it for as strong as i have this thing set up but it ain't gonna hurt but as you see the ramps came out really nice height wise um nice transition you know for not being a uh, dovetail it actually looks pretty good to me so I'm going to go ahead and set it up in the camera. I'm going to cut this next piece of flat bar right here. We're going to go ahead and drill and put it in this other side over here. Tack the end cap back on again. Um, I'm going to add this piece of um, angle on the edge right here. Because basically I want it to stick out to about here. And I want it to help as a stop to push against here. So that way when that thing is all the way up, it can't do a lot of rattling, a lot of moving around. So I like it. I think it actually came out really good. I'm quite happy with it so far. Um, major, major improvement over those other ramps. Everything moves like it should. Everything's nice and free. I actually had to use the trailer last night to haul some furniture. So that's why I had to cut the video a little short last night and kind of abrupt. Um, but I went ahead and I brought these up and I chained them and everything. And they actually held up very well. Um, two hour drive to and from. And the trailer was actually quieter. Um, it was amazing how just changing those ramps out took that rattle away. But I'm really happy with angling those jacks on the bottom for those things to sit level with the trailer much better i love the way that looks so much more but um the last thing i'm going to end up doing i don't think i'm going to do it on these videos i might do it at a future video is i'm going to go ahead and when i go to the scrapyard get that flat bar and then go ahead and make that transition to that ramp at the bottom um i can't get to the, the scrapyard probably till the end of next week so that'll be another video but anyway we're almost wrapped up on these ramps so Let's go ahead and set up, get this bar in here, and finish up. Oh, yeah, that's right. another thing I did off camera. This taillight housing was bent down really bad. I figured I could probably heat it and put a jack under it and raise it. It was raising the whole trailer. So I went ahead and I had to cut it loose here, here, cut the bracket off, um, bend this up, take the back bar here. I had to bring this up to straighten it out because even this was bent down. And then I'm going to grind this all down, clean it up, and you'll never be the wiser. But at least I got a straight taillight housing again. Well, straight or it's got a little belly to the top but nowhere near what it was so then again i think another future video is going to be rewiring i'm going to rewire this whole entire trailer put all new extra lights reflectors after i do the painting everything on here and um yeah get a nice little paint job on here redo the deck um it'll be a nice 500 hour trailer so again can't beat it couldn't beat the price so all right let me take a drink and then let's get started All right, let's do it.
All right, I'm going to run inside on the grinder real fast, and I'm going to hit these edges around these over a little bit. So I'll be right back. Mark these out. There. And there. All right. So what we're gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and drill the hole first with the center pilot hole, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use a step bit. I'm going to use this one first, then the one a little bit bigger. This one here, because I need a one inch hole for those pins in the ramp. So I'm going to go ahead and run this in. This is for the bolts that go through the frame. And then I'm going to just chamfer the hole a little bit with this when I'm done. Definitely makes it much quicker to bore bigger holes. Alright, so this one. I really want to go through just a little bit. Just enough to share for the hole. this ramp on up. And then uh, lock her in place. the other ramp back up lock it in place so I can see where I had the angle at match them up throw them out okay so that's why I did it that way so that way I can bring this one over a little bit line them up lock them in place
replace it with the bigger bit. Just a little bit. There. We're in there. All right, let me find my bolts. See how it works. See how straight they are. And they're like that one. Perfect. All right. Well, the ramps are locked in place. So the only other thing I need to do to this one is put the hole in there for the cotter pin. Just like it did right here. So once I paint them, I'll put these through, bend them around on the other side. And that's it. They're done. So honestly i guess that's about it for this video that's all there is to making set of trailer ramps and doing solid braces instead of chains um like i said the safety chains i'm going to keep just to put on there for extra reassurance that those ramps stay in place other than that i'm going to tack that end cap back on paint it and that'll be it so make sure you watch the end of this video i'll throw some pictures throwing it all painted and done and uh that's going to be a wrap so Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Hit that notification bell. And then the next project is the spare tire. And then we're going to do the angles to the tips of the ramps. So thanks for watching. And I uh, hope to see you again next time.